Let's open our Bibles now to the book of Luke, chapter number 20. Chapter 20, as we begin uh, this new chapter, as we continue our verse-by-verse study. And uh, this is in uh, the time when Jesus was coming in and out of Jerusalem day by day. Uh, he came in on uh, what we call Palm Sunday and presented himself, but he wouldn't stay overnight. Uh, he wouldn't stay overnight. He'd go back to Bethany, and then the next day he would go into the city and back and forth day by day. And it came to pass, this is chapter 20, verse 1, and that on one of those days, as he taught, as he taught, Jesus uh, was very open about his teaching. He went right into the temple, and the people would follow in, and he would teach them day by day. And as he taught the people in the temple and preached the gospel, did you notice what Jesus did? He preached the good news. Now, the word gospel means good news, and Jesus gave them the good news that he was the Savior. That's the gospel. The gospel, as we are given to us very clearly, is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the rest of the world. He is saying something marvelous here. Jesus preached that gospel. Jesus preached the gospel. Now, uh, Paul said in uh, 1 Corinthians 15 that the gospel is that Jesus died on the cross to save sinners, that he was buried, and on the third day he rose again and was seen of uh, several people around him. And so we get the gospel, and Jesus was preaching the gospel unto the people. Now, the Bible says, as he preached the gospel, the chief priest and the scribes came upon him with the elders and spake unto him, saying, Tell us, by what authority doest thou these things? And who is he that gave thee this authority? <laughs> you know, uh, there are people in the world today that are always asking about authority. Who has the authority to do this or that or the other? And uh, we are taught as Christians uh, that we ought to be subject uh, to those that are over us. And we ought to pray for the president, the vice president, and all of our leaders. We pray that they'll come to know Christ as Savior and then walk with him and have the guidance of God in their lives. And that's such an important thing. And it's important that each of us understand our position. We're to be good citizens uh, in the world, but truly our citizenship is in heaven. And uh, we're looking to that time when we shall see him face to face. Now, our Lord Jesus here was preaching the gospel, and as he preached, these chief priests and scribes came upon him with the elders, and uh, they are the religious leaders in all of Israel, and uh, they rejected Jesus, and so now they're trying to put him uh, in a position where he would be embarrassed, and so they, in front of all the people, said, uh, who gave you the authority to come here? and teach in this temple as if they owned it. And uh, Jesus said, remember, it's my house. My house, he said, uh, is a house of prayer. Jesus claimed he really owned the house. And by the way, he does. He owns the church. And, and so uh, he said uh, unto them, well, I'm going to ask you a question too. You answer me and I'll answer you. He said, the baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? Now, it's, under, it's, it's interesting to understand that Jesus was so wise, uh, wiser than Solomon is here. And Jesus knew every heart of every one of those scribes and elders and all these people. He knew exactly what they were thinking. He knew they were trying to make him look bad in front of the people so that they could say, he's no teacher, he's not from God, and he's not the real McCoy. And Jesus knew their plan. He knew what they were trying to do. And, and so when they asked him a question, he just gave them a question back. You answer me, and then I'll answer you. And then he said, the baptism of John. John the Baptist came baptizing in, uh, in around Jerusalem over at Bethbara, and uh, all the people went out from all around the area, and people from everywhere came, and they were baptized by John the Baptist. And John preached Jesus. John said, I'm going to baptize you in water. He's going to come, and he'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And uh, then he said, 
I'm telling you, I am not the Savior. I'm not the one. He must increase. I must decrease. And then when Jesus came, he said, everyone, listen, look, right there he is. Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. He is the Savior. He's the one who can forgive sin. He's the one who gives eternal life. And, uh, and so uh, when John came preaching, these people rejected him. That is, the religious leaders rejected him. Now, the common people gladly received him. And uh, those of us uh, who just had common sense enough to know that he was telling the truth, and uh, he was moving and preaching by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so they came into conviction. They believed they were baptized of John unto Jesus, believing in the one that would come and die for their sins. Their salvation was not in the water. Their salvation was in their faith in Jesus Christ. Water has never washed anyone's sins away. By the way, understand that. Uh, that, uh, that teaching that some people come up with somewhere, uh, that uh, water washes sins. Let me tell you, the Bible teaches that only the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, can cleanse us from our sins. It is not in the power of the water. Now, we have pretty good water here in Fruitland Park, but I'm telling you, that water has no power to wash sins away. You can wash your hands, but you can't wash your heart. You can't take away those sins of yesterday with any water in this world. You must come to Jesus and be saved through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The, the Bible says of Jesus that he loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. It is the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, that cleanses us from all sin. And so uh, he says to them, tell me now about John the Baptist. Uh, was he from God or was he just from man? What do you think? And so they said, hmm. They began to reason. And they said, you know, if we shall say from heaven, he'll say, well, why didn't you, didn't you believe him? Why did you not believe in him? Why didn't you accept his teaching? Why didn't you repent of your sins and believe on the one that he said would come and be the Savior of the world? If you say he's from heaven, why didn't you believe in him? And so they reasoned that among themselves. We can't say he was from heaven because then he will condemn us for not receiving him. And then he said, others said, well, wait a minute. We'll just say he's of men. Well, somebody else said, no, no, if we say that, all these people around us here, well, they love to stone us because they all know that John the Baptist was a prophet of God. And, uh, and so they know that he was from heaven. They know that he was preaching the truth. And so if we say of men, uh, then they'll stone us. For they'd be persuaded that John was a prophet. And so they figured out that there was no way in, under heaven that they could give an answer to this question. Jesus, who they tried to put on the horns of a dilemma, Jesus turned it right back on them. And they could not answer this question. And so they reasoned. They said, but if we say of men, the people will stone us. And they answered that they could not tell Whence it was. Now they had to admit that before the whole crowd. This crowd that they tried to sway against Jesus, now they had to admit to them that they could not answer the question that Jesus gave them. And uh, so then Jesus said, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. I'm not going to tell you anything then. And so the common people rejoiced and said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Now, I want you to know something today. There are people who would ask, by what authority do we preach the gospel? And the authority comes from heaven itself. You remember the name John Bunyan. Many of you will remember the name of the most famous book that he wrote, The Pilgrim's Progress. Now, John Bunyan was put in the Bedford prison in England for one thing. Because he refused to accept a license from the church to preach. Now, he was a preacher. And he was telling people that Jesus is the Savior. And they didn't like that. And, and so they said, you've got to come to us and get a license from us to get a permission from us in order for you to preach. 
And, uh, and John Bunyan said, no, no, I don't. I, you can't license God's man. God called me to preach. God has given me license to preach. He's commanded me to go preach. And I'm not going to take a license from you if that you've given me permission to preach because if you give me permission to preach, you could take that permission away from me and keep me from preaching. So he said, I'm not going to take a license from you. I don't need that license. In other words, what he was saying is, I know where my authority comes from. God is the one that called me. Now, folk, I, I was called of God back in 1954 to preach the gospel. I never shall forget it. I was at a camp called Camp Splinter. And, uh, and the man of God gave the word. And, and the Spirit of God got a hold of my heart. He said, I want you to be a preacher. That's your job for the rest of your life. That's what you need to do. And uh, so I went forward and I surrendered my life. I said, Lord, I'll do what you want me to do. I'll be a preacher if that's what you want me to do. If you want me in a mission field, I'll go to the mission field and preach. But I just want to be obedient to you. Oh, when one's called of God, he knows it. He knows that this is the calling of God. And this is something that God wanted him to do, not something he just dreamed up of himself. Now, John, John Bunyan was right. John Bunyan said, we don't need the license to preach. If the government said we can't, we're going to go ahead and preach anyway. How do I know that? Well, that's exactly what they did in the book of Acts. That's what, exactly what they did when Peter and John were preaching the gospel and they came upon them and arrested them and put them in jail overnight. And, and then they told them, we're going to let you go, but we're going to let you go with this condition that you don't preach in the name of Jesus ever again. And uh, you know what they said? They said, um, how do you figure this out? Should we obey you or God. And so they went right on out and kept on preaching. They kept on preaching. Now the government said they couldn't preach, but they went ahead and preached anyway because it was the right thing to do. God called them to preach, and they went out there and preached. Now I'm not saying, folk, listen, I'm not saying that the government has done wrong when they said we have to watch out about this uh, COVID-19 thing. And I think we need to use good judgment. But if the government will start to pick on the church and say, you can not meet, but everybody else can meet, then uh, we've got a problem. We've got a real problem. I mean, if it's all right to gather in your cars and go down and sit on the parking lot at Walmart and listen to the radio, but it's not all right to sit in your car in the church lot and listen to the radio, we've got a problem. The government oversteps its authority. When the government starts picking on the church, when the government starts telling the church, you must not obey God, you must obey us, and we're going to let others go. We're going to let the slaughtering mills go. Let them go ahead and murder as many babies as they possibly can murder. That's okay, but you can't meet in the church. Something's wrong with that, folks. Listen, there's something desperately wrong with that. And so understand that we have tried our best to do what's right. We want to get along. Well, if the time comes that the government says one thing and God says another, we must obey God rather than man and be willing to pay the consequences. They told them they can't preach anymore. They went ahead and preached. They arrested him again, beat him again, put him in jail again. And then it took uh, James, the brother John, cut his head off. And uh, this, uh, every one of the early apostles uh, were martyred. Uh, they lost their lives because they stood up for Jesus. Uh, they said, we're going to do what God wants us to do and be willing to pay the consequences. Now, friend, listen to me today. Jesus is the authority. The Word of God is the authority. Listen to what God says. Uh, mankind doesn't have the last word. God has the last word. Get that down, mark it down, write it down, chisel it in stone. God's word will always stand, and God will always have the last word. And so in this case, they said, uh, who gave you the authority to preach? Who told you you could stand up and preach and, and uh, tell these people that there's a way to heaven? He preached the gospel. The gospel is the good news that God loves you and God wants you 
to have the forgiveness of your sins, that God hates your sins, but he loves you and he's going to provide a savior for you. And that savior will bear your sins in his own body, pay the penalty. He'll take your punishment for you in your place and he will be crucified. He will rise again. Put your faith in Jesus. And they had to, we don't like for you to preach this good news. We don't like you to preach this. And so we want to know who gave you the authority to do so. Well, I'm going to tell you, if anyone asks us who gave us the authority to do what we do, it's not the license that we got from the state. And it wasn't the permission that we got from the president. And it wasn't the governor who said it's okay. God himself commanded us to go preach. And God commanded us not to forsake assembling together. And uh, we will use good judgment uh, if we're fighting all of us together, the whole society, against the COVID-19, that's okay. We'll go along. But if they ever pick on the church, if they ever tell us that we can't while others can, then we will obey God rather than man. Take notice. Take notice, Governor. Take notice, the mayors of the cities. We must obey God. We must be obedient to God because he is the one who commissioned us. The government didn't commission us to preach. The president didn't call us to preach. Fauci didn't say we could go preach. We got our authority from God who ordained us to preach the message. Now the message is clear. The message is that God so loved the world, all the people of the world, God loves you. God so loves you that he gave his only begotten son. His only begotten son is Jesus, the only one who's begotten of God in all this world. He is the one, and God gave him to the world to die on a cross, bearing our sins in his own body on the tree, paying the penalty that we owed that God so loved the world, not just loved, so loved. I'm just like a, a boy that uh, starts dating a girl, and after about uh, a month or so, he says, you know, I love you. And then in a, another week or two, she says, I love you. And uh, they date for a while, and then they go through some wonderful experiences together, and uh, they're getting ready, and he's going to pop the question, and he's already purchased a ring, and then he gets down on his knees. Hey, yeah, I still believe in the old-fashioned way. And he gets down on his knees and he says, uh, I so love you. I, 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 I want you to be my wife. Will you marry me? And see, there's a difference between just saying I love and I so love. And the Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him. Whosoever, that marvelous, wonderful word that means anybody in the whole wide world, whosoever will may come. Whosoever believeth in him puts his confidence, his trust in Jesus Christ as his only hope of heaven. He turns to Jesus from his sins and he says, Lord, I'm under judgment because of these sins. I need forgiveness. I need freedom from these sins. I'm turning to Jesus who died for me and who was buried and rose again. And he says, dear Jesus, you are my hope. You are my only hope of heaven. I receive you as my only hope and my Savior. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish. There's no going to hell for someone who trusts in Jesus. There's no one in hell who ever trusted in Jesus. And there never will any, be anybody in hell who's trusted in Jesus as their Savior. And uh, they will not perish, but they will have everlasting life. Life without end. Everlasting life in heaven with the Lord. It all comes when you turn to Jesus and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. I say to this to you by the authority of God himself, by the authority of God's word. If you receive Jesus, you will in no wise be cast out. All that come to the Father by him shall be saved. And he is the way, the truth, and the life. The way to go, the truth to believe, the life to receive, and no one comes to the Father but by him. But if you receive him, you receive 
eternal life. And you shall never perish, neither shall anyone ever pluck you out of his hand. Oh, today turn to Jesus. Today receive him. By the authority of God's word, I guarantee you that you will receive his gift of eternal life. And you receive that life from the Son of God himself, Jesus. He will save you if you call upon him. Now pray this simple prayer. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner and I cannot save myself. I can't wash away my own sins. I can't change my own life. And Lord, I need forgiveness. I need forgiveness of all of my sins. I need to be freed from my sins. And I cannot do anything for myself. I trust you. Jesus, I believe you died for me. You paid the price on Calvary on the cross. You took my sins in your own body. And you paid the full price. You took my penalty. You're my substitute. And Jesus, I know that you were buried and rose again. And right now, living Jesus, I trust you. Jesus, you're my only hope. I receive you into my life. Jesus, save me and keep me saved. Thank you. Amen. Receive him today, and you will be saved.